So you watch this. Physically. This is this is something that's obviously near and dear to our heart before we get to Roe v. Wade, the Dave Chappelle yeah. situation. And there are larger ramifications at play here than just Dave Chappelle, just like we talked about this with Chris Rock and Will Smith. So before we show the clip, this is probably something I would assume you were on top of immediately when it happened. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like I, I've said it on the show before, I, I had opened for Dave uh, before he went away. Mm-hmm. And then I opened for him when he came back. And it's just interesting to see, especially now, his last special, he included an entire story about his trans friend who committed suicide. Right. Included in there. And that wasn't good enough. And the reality is, is that just shows that even if you try to give somebody what they want and to try to, in, you know, ingrain yourself into their life and show a little bit of empathy, it doesn't matter. Right. You will never give the, anybody what they want. Right. It, they, it will always be this narrative of it's anti-you. Comedy, like Scott Thompson uh, from Kids in the Hall always said it best, like comedy is supposed to be dangerous. There's supposed to be an element of that. Yeah. But it's also supposed to be a relief uh, from everything going on in society. There's supposed to be one thing we can look at. And a comedy that... Uh, uh, a society that loses its sense of humor just loses everything. There's yeah. no reason to even exist. Well, his last special before that wasn't even a comedy special. It was about George Floyd and went in pretty hard on Candace Owens, and she wasn't all that upset. Hey, she how many offended at all? How many right wing extremists uh, attacked Dave Chappelle on stage? We have a good A B test here because he's gone after both sides, and really, he's gone after the right for much more of his career than the left. I mean, at one point he was perceived as being anti-white with Comedy Central, and that was something where they wanted to step in and sort of take some creative control. That's not the only reason, but he walked away from a $100 million contract. So when you talk about being bold and brave, and I was talking with this barista at Starbucks. I never go there. I ran out of coffee, okay? So hold your comments. No, you know what? Admonish me. Admonish me. I shouldn't have been in Starbucks. <laughs> All right, you got it. I should not have been in Starbucks. Yeah, the only reason I went was because Duncan, they weren't taking cards at the drive through Yeah. Like, we only sense. accept cash. Well, I hope you accept uh, gold coins yeah, <laughs> Duncan. So I had to go to Starbucks, and uh, they were talking. She was talking about Dave Chappelle, this younger barista, and she was saying, "I don't like his trans jokes. I don't. I think that his jokes about sexual assault. I was. You really don't know, do you? That you know, it's not bold and brave to beat women, for example, in a swim meet. It's a brave move to walk away from a hundred million dollars at Comedy Central, which Dave Chappelle did. He actually had." Skin in the game. Serious skin in the game. And had friends take his show. Yes. And then the show went to uh, Mencia. And then the show went Luke. to... And I and I think he and Peel are brilliant. They're great. But it was a, it was a similar... There was a dark period yeah. between but, that. Yeah, there was a dark period between that. He and Peel were brilliant, but... What are you talking about? That's a beaner joke! <laughs> hey, that's retarded! My dick, man, it don't work. Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. there are seven words you can't say on television. Like, that's not yours. Yes, it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it, yeah, it really was a sad time. But he had this brilliant show, and, and his friends, you know, a couple of his friends still did the show. They, they still went with it. And even though the, the Chappelle show without Dave there, right? they really tried to keep playing it. And, and Dave has always been, I think Killing Him Softly is one of the most brilliant stand-up specials you can ever watch. The it's guy's hilarious. Crying. He punches on all sides, and it's very personal and real yeah. and funny and good. He writes three hours of material a week. He, he gives everything that has been asked of comedians. That's the thing with Dave Chappelle. Whether you agree with him or not, and I disagree with him on a whole lot, everything that is asked of a good comedian, Dave Chappelle, has given and then some. He writes new material. He's very even-handed in that no side is safe with Dave Chappelle. He's not mean-spirited. He treats his staff well. He treats his fans well. Everything that you could ask of Dave Chappelle, he has given you. He's and gracious to new comics. He's at, well, there you go. Oh, yeah, He's kind to his openers. Look, it's true, though. You don't see that with everybody. Oh, believe me, I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try opening for someone in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who promises you nothing more than a ride back to New York and then leaves you there. Oh, good people. Yeah. You ever I'm the sweet side. That's when you see a six-figure check and then they hand you 300 bucks. You're like, oh, it's, yeah, okay. Thanks. I got it. Well, thank right. you. This is enough to buy rope. Yes, perfectly. <laughs> Probably not enough. <laughs> no. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe if you do a nice, uh, if you do like a li nice sailor's knot. Oh, well, yeah, not rope and gas. I don't know about home. knots. I'm not a nautical expert. All right, so this happened, like we just talked about with Dave Chappelle. I wanted to set that up uh, because this affects us personally, but it also affects you personally. Uh, yesterday at, I believe it was the Hollywood Bowl, um, Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage. Now, hold on a second, hold on a second. Spoiler alert. It has a happy ending because a protester got the kicked out of him not protester let's call these people what they are violent thugs someone storms the stage to try and attack dave Chappelle. here we go History. Boom. 
Also, the Hollywood Bowl, not the place to do this. No. Was that Will Smith? <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, oh, that's a shame. Let me be really clear about my position <laughs> on this. If that person never walked again and had to sip his food through a straw, I'm not saying that's ideal. I don't wish it upon them. It wouldn't be an injustice. You and I both know when, we are, when you're on stage, especially when someone comes up with a replica gun, as he did, yeah. you can't know the intent. You absolutely have to eliminate that threat. If someone is storming a stage violently, you are, uh, you're taking that risk that you could lose your life because you are putting someone else in fear of theirs. Just like if you mug someone at, gun, at knife point. I wasn't going to stab him. You know what? The victim can't know that. So uh, I think that that's a, a happy middle ground. Well, I, I, I don't know what kind of injuries were sustained, but, you know, I'm hoping that there were some. Well, also, I mean, clearly it was self-defense. Dave Chappelle was attacking you with doing his stand-up show when yes. you charged the stage. But words are violence. Oh, that's right. So is silence. Uh, uh, yes. So you know what else is violence is uh, what they did to him. That yes. was great. Yes. Actual violence. Yeah. They say all lives matter. And uh, this is my proof that it, they don't. Yes. No, that's true. I, I could, honestly, I, I don't want to just pretend like I could care less about the guy. No. These are the, th he is the exact. Well, you know this because we've, look, look. And by but the way, you can go to ladderwithcrow.com slash short. You're going to be in actually, I don't know if this is a good time to plug it. Copycats. <laughs> uh, this week in Springfield, Missouri, Lincoln, Nebraska. So you know what? Uh, Go out and support Dave because he's going to be on stage. And you know this, too. I'll be, by the way, I haven't done a comedy club in years. I'm doing it for the first time in uh, July, whatever yep. that week is, the uh, 18th or 23rd in Spokane, Washington. It's, it's not on the website. It's a club, dude. My friend Adam runs it. It's great. Well, but it's the reason it's really tough to secure those places. Yeah. So uh, we've had to take precautions. Good luck. I'll be in Spokane this summer. You can just find Spokane Comedy Club if you want to go see it. I'm working out some material for our fall tour, and you'll be doing these dates this weekend. You know, I told you about this before when I was doing less and less, before even the pandemic on stage, and I was saying, well, look, you'll kind of experience it. There's a different security risk. And a lot of people think, because a lot of people out there want to act like martyrs on both the left and the right, that it's just, well, okay, you're blowing it out of proportion. You know now. Yes. I'm, I'm surprised that that guy that got that close. That would never happen at one of our shows. Oh, t 15 years ago, I remember going into like the Deep South to perform. Yeah. And uh, just what bouncers would do to a heckler. Yeah. You know, before really people had camera phones. Right. It was fun to watch. It was. Yes. And uh, it, it was, a, but it's sad that this is what it's come to. There's a, that people who are just simply trying to go up on stage, make jokes, have fun. Everybody around you, when you stand up and scream or shout or get upset, without even this, right? They hate you. Yeah, they hate you. You make everyone uncomfortable. You ruin their entire night. It's awful. Just shut your mouth and watch the show. We even had to deal with a that. positive heckler one time. We I've were had like every, that. Remember when our show was at uh, was it was it Evansville or was it? Uh, is it a couple? That was places. in Detroit. Remember every time oh, everybody was like, it. "I love you." We were like, "Okay, good, calm down." No, I just yeah. want you to know. We're like. Stop. And then someone, the yeah. same person that when you came out said, they're taking out your greatest fan. You're like, I don't give a Yeah. <laughs> it's like at this point, I don't care. But I appreciate the sentiment. Right. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard. Is, like, I like your shirt. You're like, I understand. I'm doing a show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like, this isn't, this isn't church. Yeah. <laughs> you can't talk back. <laughs> this is not an interactive show. It's not a film where you like yell out that he's behind you and I get stabbed. Well, it's so required to timing, especially in my act. Like a lot of my stuff, like I, it, it, I'm not dirty at all, but I, I'm dark and I talk about my true life experiences. Yeah, I need to create attention. That's the idea. So I careful with your life experiences my, because it might yeah. trigger someone else who had similar experiences. Oh, that's true. And that's they might true. they might attack me. Yeah, the PTSD, <laughs> yeah. and then then you might have PTSD, and it's a never ending PTSD well, no, but, cycle. Well, it's I'm white. It doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> privileged. <laughs> yeah. I, Watch louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.